Hello and welcome back to Wise Revised for Parents. This is session two. This session is called The Teenage Brain and why teenagers can be volatile, untidy risk takers. Your teenager's brain works completely differently to yours and to mine. In, in fact, your teenager's brain is completely different to yours and to mine. In fact, just like a microwave and an oven work in very different ways, just so an adult brain is so different to a teenage brain because although they, they make decisions and they analyze information, etc., they work in completely different ways. When I was younger, I just assumed that teenagers were different to adults because of context. I assumed that because teenagers were going through the high pressure social situation of secondary school um, and had some responsibility, but not complete responsibility like adults, um, that's why they behave differently. Um, because adults have been exposed to more experiences and were at a different stage in their life, that's why they reacted to situations differently to teenagers. But in fact, their brains are completely differently wired. Some teenagers to be volatile, untidy risk takers. Teenagers can be incredible risk takers. This picture represents the adult brain and this picture represents the teenage brain. You see in the adult brain, to do most of our thinking, most of our decision making, we use the prefrontal cortex. Now this is the part of the brain that responds to situation with good judgment and awareness of long term consequences. Now in the teenage brain, a lot of the decision making occurs in the amygdala. This is the emotional part of the brain. And so teenagers are routinely making decisions with the emotional part of their brain. And you can think about how that might pan out. Parts of the brain are connected to each other with synapses. Now some of the last synapses to connect are between the prefrontal and the frontal cortices of the brain. And this is where insight, empathy and risk taking are controlled. What this means is that some very, very smart teenagers can do some very stupid things in a very impulsive way. That is to say, they're gonna take risks and they're gonna make bad decisions. You see, when we adults are presented with new information, we should be able to rationally think it through and, and contextualize it and understand it and respond with the correct emotional response. Whereas teenagers, find this a lot harder to do. To give you a very crude example about the difference between a teenage brain and an adult brain could be like this. Hmm, I am hungry. Here are some biscuits. I have lunch in half an hour and these are not very healthy. I'm not gonna eat the biscuits. In a teenage brain, I am hungry. I like biscuits, I'm gonna eat these biscuits. Now this difference becomes even more apparent when we think about things like revision. Now all of us would go through the mind process of thinking, I'm not enjoying this, therefore I'm not gonna do it. But for a teenager who's trying to revise for something that's in the distance a long way, it can be really difficult for them to evaluate that as a good choice of action. Especially when they've got things like Instagram, Snapchat, gaming if they're if they're a gamer as well so many better in their opinion uh, options for them with quick gratification they're going to enjoy there and then there are going to be times during the revision and exam period where your teenagers get incredibly stressed and upset and that's when you've got to be steady as a rock it can be really difficult to talk to teenagers at times really really difficult and if they're having a big old meltdown and having a really big complaint the, the wise thing to do from my understanding is just to let them talk to you and I would often say you should say to them do you want me to respond to this or do you want me just to listen because often it's just important just to be there as a listening ear not to offer any advice or counsel but just to be there listening. Famous neurologist uh, Frances E. Jensen said that the best conversation she had with the teenagers while they were really stressed was often while she was driving the car and they were sat there in the passenger seat next to them and they were both looking forward in the same direction driving, doing something different and having a really good conversation. And it was less intense than if they were kind of looking at each other um, or it was really quiet. That was for her the best time. And that's great advice, I think, for all of us. Teenagers are not just risk takers. They can also be very volatile. I've got an incredibly embarrassing memory of being about 13, 14 and asking my dad if I could come um, home from the park a bit later because my mates were coming back at 10 o'clock. I said, can I, can I come back at 10 o'clock? And he said, no, you have to come back at nine o'clock. That's the latest, you're coming back at nine. And I had the most irrational response to that. I remember I shouted, I slammed some doors, 
ran out of the house, told him I was never coming back. Now looking back now, I can see that was completely irrational. It's embarrassing how awful that response was to what my dad said. But at the time, it felt perfectly adequate. It seemed like the correct response at the time to that situation. I was processing what was happening with the amygdala, the emotional part of my brain, and I responded accordingly. Now sometimes during revision, teenagers are gonna react in a very volatile way. This is a waste of time, it's not going in, I'm stupid, I'm gonna fail, what's the point in revising, what's the point in doing anything, this is the worst day of my life, I hate you, I hate school, I hate this subject, I never should have chosen it, GCSEs are a waste of time, etc. And when this happens, it's really important that we and you, us teachers, you parents, are strong and stable and there for them. We need to make sure that our, our teenagers constantly feel valued, loved, encouraged and equipped. Valued. You are doing so great, you're going to do so well. If you keep putting this effort in and this hard work, it will pay off, I promise. Love. No matter what happens, I love you, I'm proud of you, you're my child and nothing's ever going to change that. Encouraged. You are doing so well. You've done such great revisions so far. You're going to do so well. You just got to keep on going and equipped. Here's your revision station. Uh, I've got some stationery here for you. Here's some resources. Here's what you need. And if and when they're having a meltdown, one of the best things you can do is get them to focus on how much they've already done. Yeah, the exams might be coming out. Don't make them count down to the exams. That's often seen as very unhelpful. You've got 100 days to go. You've got 50 days to go. Concentrate on what they have done. What have they achieved so far? How many days have they revised on? We talked about in our last video that idea of having a calendar on the wall and every day they do some revision, just putting a little red cross on there. And at this point, when they're having a meltdown, you can show them that and say, look at that, you're doing so well. You've done so much revision so far already. You're on the right path. Teenagers can also be naturally very untidy. Now, teenagers often will also come across incredibly lazy, and actually sometimes this is not their fault. Loads of studies have shown that teenagers need about 10 hours sleep. Now, if you think about that, that means going to bed at 10 o'clock at night and going to sleep at 10 o'clock and waking up at 8 o'clock. Now, from the teenagers I know, that is practically impossible to do, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't encourage it. But to just create a little bit of sympathy uh, for, for the teenagers, Scientists have said for a teenager who goes to bed at 11 and wakes up at 6, that's like an adult being deprived of four hours sleep. So many teenagers are waking up feeling completely sleep deprived and then going to school in that way. Now, it's going to be really difficult to get you to get your teenage child to go to bed and sleep at 10 and wake up at 8, possibly impossible. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't encourage it. And there are some, some things that I would really suggest that you do that might sound a bit extreme, but things like before they're going to bed, get them to hand in their phone and their PlayStation controller if they've got a console in their room. Ultimately, I'd say don't let them have a console in their room, but it might be like many teenagers I teach, they're up late playing on their consoles and they're up late on their phones as well. So if you could, if you can have that agreement, say I'm doing this for the best of you, we're gonna make an agreement now, you're gonna hand those in so that's not a temptation for you before you go to bed, that would be very wise. Teenagers also naturally are very untidy and badly organized. And sadly, untidiness and bad organization are enemies of effective revision. We've got a revision video coming about how to plan your revision and how to organize your revision space. And you'll find that if you're being untidy and badly organized, that's really going to hinder your revision. However, this is something as a parent, you can 100% help with and work with them to organize their time really effectively. So they've got time to do leisure time and social time, but also that important revision and also to have a safe and tidy space where they can keep their revision resources and get down to business with their revision. I hope that was helpful. Um, as I said in the last video, now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Do tune in next week where we're gonna be thinking about this question, what lies will your teenager tell you during revision?